Our first stop is Pompey's Pillar National Monument, which is on the famous Lewis and Clark Trail. The Lewis and Clark Expedition was authorized by Thomas Jefferson in 1803 to explore the western lands he had just purchased from Napoleon of France, known as the Louisiana Purchase. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark set out from St. Louis on the Missouri River, taking 43 men with them on the two-year journey. They hoped to find an easy river route to the Pacific Ocean, but that didn't happen. Instead, they trudged across the Rocky Mountains and encountered over 50 Native American tribes on the journey. Remarkably, only one man died, and it was from a burst appendix. On the way, they met up with a French fur trapper and hired him as an interpreter. They allowed his wife, Sakagawea, to join them on the journey. While on the journey, she gave birth to a son whom she named Jean-Baptiste, but Clark nicknamed him Pompey. They traveled on the rivers as much as possible using boats like this. On the return trip, William Clark saw this quirky little sandstone outcropping along the Yellowstone River. He climbed to the top of it, which provided views of the river and wildlife nearby. He named it after the child, Pompey. He also etched his name into the rock, which is now protected in this glass casing. It is the only physical evidence of the journey left behind on the Lewis and Clark Trail. This is one of the smallest national monuments in the country, but surprisingly, it has a gorgeous visitor center, which was completed in 2006, commemorating the 200 year anniversary of the Lewis and Clark expedition. It's run by the Bureau of Land Management, whose employees were so welcoming and kind to us while we were there. Along Clark's return journey, one of the men on the expedition asked for his release so he could go fur trapping in the mountains. This was the famous John Coulter, and it's possible that he was the first European to see Yellowstone and the Tetons. Yellowstone was called Coulter's hell for a long time due to Coulter's stories of steam coming out of the land. Coulter Bay in Grand Teton is named after him as well as Coulter's Pass which we will drive over as we enter Yellowstone. We visited quite a few Lewis and Clark sites in this area over the years. Great Falls, Montana has a really nice interpretive center. In Helena, Montana, you can take a boat ride through a section that Lewis and Clark called the Gates of the Mountains. And in beautiful Salmon, Idaho, we visited the Sacagawea Interpretive Center. This is a clip from a longer video I created about Northern Yellowstone. Click the video image on your screen to watch that one next. 